for Justin. Take it away. So yes, Deliverance. The uh, movie starring Burt Reynolds is coming to video games. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, uh. yeah, if you... <laughs> If you donate a hundred dollars, you get a mustache. Um, I think Cloud. I think Cloud Jumper was scared for a second there. He's like, "Do I have to write a URL?" I don't. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Kingdom Come Deliverance is not based off the 1972 film. It's actually a game made by an indie studio called Warhorse Studios, and I believe that's in uh, Czech Republic. And anyways, it's coming out on PC, Mac, Linux, and hopefully Xbox One and PS4. They're using the CryEngine to build it. And basically, uh, it's a first-person, medieval, sandbox RPG. And their tagline is Dungeon and No Dragons. So basically what that means is there's not going to be magic in this game. It's a very realistic type of medieval game. Uh, the story and the world are based on historical events, and I believe probably historical places as well. Um, there's neat, you have to sleep and eat to keep your health up. Uh, also, food will spoil, so if you have food in your inventory for too long, uh, it might rot after a while. And also, they put a lot of emphasis currently on... Uh, the combat, the sword fighting. Uh, you can actually attack multiple points on enemies. And from the looks of it, there's sort of like five... Um, the reticle kind of shows like five different uh, marks, which makes me think that you could probably do uh, multiple different slashes and attacks. And also a cool thing is there's physics used with every strike. So um, there's some footage in it of the character, you know, like attacking an NPC, the NPC is blocking it, but as they block it, you can see the weight of the attack as they take it and then try to get back into their posture again. Um, so it's really, uh, really makes the combat uh, look engaging. Uh, let's see here. Some of the other things that they've talked about when comparing it to other games is they mentioned the freedom and game mechanics of Skyrim. Uh, so in this game, you can have different roles, a uh, lot of different stats. There's crafting, and you can ride around on a horse. Um, the storytelling of The Witcher, they mention a lot of political intrigue, nonlinear stories. The setting of Mountain Blade, so it is sort of a typical European uh, setting. And uh, there's large-scale battles that will take place. And then uh, the tough combat of Dark Souls. You know, I'm really hoping for uh, tight controls on this game. And then also, like, combat that if you make a mistake, you will get punished for it. Um, you might be thinking, like, okay, this is a pretty big game. It sounds pretty big. And all they're asking for right now is 300,000 pounds, which is roughly $500,000. And they've already put in what they've made so far has been like they've spent 1.5 million uh, to develop. Um, so that's really not enough to finish the game, but it is enough to help persuade their private investor to keep on pouring in um, the main develop money. Um, this way, it kind of shows by having the uh, 300,000 pounds donated. It shows that there's enough demand in the game and kind of, I'm sure, uh, makes it easier for this investor to throw in more money after putting in $1.5 million. Uh, the developers seem pretty experienced. Uh, there's been a few of them that were leads on the Mafia series. Um, other key developers have different backgrounds in first-person shooters, pen and paper RPGs, etc. So I think that kind of works well and since it's a first-person game in an RPG setting. Now, what you can get for your... Uh, if you back it, um, if you donate 15 pounds or roughly $24, you will get a digital copy of the game. 
But if you read the fine print underneath that, it mentions that you only get Act 1. They're going to be releasing this game in three acts. Um, after the first act, the second act will come out in about eight to nine months later, and then the third one will come out after that, another eight to nine months. So they mentioned in their first act that it's going to be about 30 hours of gameplay, and then it's going to also be around nine square kilometer map that you'll be able to travel around. When the second one comes out, they're going to obviously add to the hours of gameplay and ex expand the map. Same with the third one, to eventually having about like um, 70 plus hours of gameplay altogether. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything I got for Kingdom Come Deliverance. I'm really liking the way it looks. You know, I really like chivalry, medieval warfare. Uh, so yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is a uh, we're getting into some almost triple A level mm -hmm. game production here on Kickstarter now. Um, just what they've shown so far, it's uh, and their target platforms as well, which you know, PC, Xbox One, PS4, the next gen systems. This is a huge undertaking, and uh, I gotta say they're saying all the the right thing so far. They're referencing Dark Souls and Skyrim, so they're definitely um, saying the right things. Uh, seems like a big part of the game will be their first-person combat system, and that's that's something where I, I, I sort of have some skepticism because first-person melee is just so hard to do. We've seen, however, many iterations of uh, Elder Scrolls come out, and then the combat's always clunky. And uh, the few games that do come out that have some good melee combat are sort of smaller games like uh, Xenoclash, or uh, what we saw in um, Escaping Me Now, guys. Lion, Lion, the stealth game, Dishonored. Oh, right. It's sort of, sort of decent. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, the game is also doing a bunch of other things. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be an epic. I'm not so sure about the episodic uh, release. Uh, it's not so common to have an open world game of this scale be portioned out like that. I can see how that could be a result of like their deal with this private investor about how you know they want to see some returns. So it's like okay, okay, as a compromise, we'll release release it in three parts. We'll get out part one, you know, like six months before part two. And that way, we can start uh, recouping some costs, right? So definitely different. Yeah, um, I guess the my the. I mean, it's it's interesting that they're they're aiming for a PC release, Mac and Linux, and then also hopefully Xbox One, PS4, next gen, next gen. They're using a, a next gen engine for next gen um, consoles, um, and the gameplay is ex from what they've shown. If that is you know live action and not pre-rendered, seems pretty fantastic. Um, audio uh, also to know they, they've hit this. Uh, this six hundred thousand dollar marker, and there's some interesting stuff ahead. Um, uh, if they're able to hit, as far as audio is concerned, if they if they hit that, hit, hit higher higher goal marks. And I guess the biggest disappointment, like Justin said, was we've played some of these very um, um, period esque uh, medieval times gameplay, including chivalry, chivalry, uh, medieval warfare. And that is a multiplayer-only game, so this is the exact opposite. This is a single-player-only experience, um, albeit some of these mechanics would probably work very well in a multiplayer setting. So that, to me, is the only disappointment. But from what I'm seeing, this is the money that they've spent on this seems like uh, uh, it's it's gonna, it's attracting people to, 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 to commit to this via Kickstarter. I think just saying that you have this kind of have this kind of money is bringing people in. So, Cloud Jumper, what, what are your thoughts on this guy? Well, um, I must I must agree with Clinton in terms of the melee combat system. Um, I've seen way too many disappointing uh, games on that end. Um, so yeah, I'm like, if they pull it off and it's really tight and it it feels really good, then that would be 
for me, really pretty much the first game that does that. Um, but the trend goes for me to have a different expectation of that. Um, I'm a I'm a huge fan and practitioner of martial arts and martial arts and sword fighting myself, so I have a very high level of disappointment <laughs> to, <laughs> to to any digital form of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like even every anything that would come remotely close to what it really feels like, or 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 to you know like give yourself even if you've never held a sword, give yourself the the feeling of actually moving around with a sword like you imagine you would, that, that would be like an incredible innovation. Um, I think that their, their setting is, is really nice. Uh, I hope that in their sound design they don't make a very common mistake and go for a lot of sound elements that wouldn't exist in a world like that. Um, I've seen that in some games where you like get soundtracks of like huge orchestras and then, you know, people, at least gamers like me, think, well, there wasn't really orchestras like this in medieval times, and <laughs> that, doesn't sort of, that doesn't make a lot of sense that I'm having this heroic music while I'm riding along here. Even if it makes me feel really great, it'd be nicer to achieve the same feeling through more authentic um, choice of sound. Can I chime in real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, their 400,000 pound stretch goal, which they beat, because um, they're at, um, did I mention that they're at like 700,000 pounds? So they've already reached their goal and they're going on to stretch goals. Anyways, um, one of the stretch goals that they already hit was a live in-game period music. So yeah, they, they definitely will be going for um, using medieval musical instruments in, this, in the music of the game. Did you check out the 500,000, though? Yeah, the symphonic orchestral soundtrack, I think, or something. Right, but they're saying that, like, originally, if they hadn't hit this 500,000, that sym symphonic sound that's in the trailer was not in the game. Because I guess it looks like the, the music that was recorded from the trailer was was recorded by a, a live orchestra. And, which is, I mean, I'm, you know... We can we could go on and talk about that for you know with Cloud Jumper <laughs> especially I mean the idea the the idea that they're that they they have the money to pay for the orchestra I mean that's mm. nuts. Well, that that symphonic orchestra is it says four cutscenes. Oh, okay. right, and, yeah. and I, it won't be like the in-game music. I think like in productions like that, it's for, for you know for anything that uh, orchestras are certainly the thing that you use. I mean, just because it also it makes you relate to whatever is happening on your screen more. Um, in terms of in-game, I find it often like weird. Like if I play a game and I go into a tavern and you know, I hear somebody there uh, is playing a violin, then yeah, it has to sound right. It has to sound fitting. It's, it's more likely that I would hear a fiddle or a viola or something. Um, and if that violin is then subtly also accompanied by a whole string orchestra, then I'm wondering, well, where is that in this <laughs> little tavern? You're in the back room. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I mean, other than that, this game looks incredibly interesting. I, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about, um, you know, like you said, it's, it's almost a AAA production. They're pumping an enormous sum of money in up front, uh, I, I get a little bit of feeling of that doesn't really belong on a platform like Kickstarter, but because they're not really kickstarting it, they kickstarted it already by putting 1.5 million of money in, and they're sort of like kick continuing now. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's by now a common practice of of crowdfunding. Um, mm -hmm. Well, and Kickstarter is going to get their money. And exactly. the folks behind Kingdom Come, Deliverance, are going to get their money. So as far as everybody else is concerned, they don't care. No. Uh, and, and I'm with you on that. I, I, I am with you on that. I, I feel like... Uh, but it's not a concern of Kickstarters, unfortunately. I'm, I'm with you. I definitely see. I definitely see Cloud Jumper's point. Uh, at the end of the day, the people will speak. Uh, the market will decide what it wants. And... We're seeing more and more of this crossover where, you know, you'll get 
people from Hollywood, established millionaires essentially, who will just go on Kickstarter to fund their own pet projects, and they get they get the feedback, they get the money. So it's it's a it's a weird, yeah, that's like an entirely different conversation, mm. which is really uh, interesting and important. But uh, yeah, I guess it's not it's not gonna stop anytime soon. We'll we'll keep seeing the bar raise and keep seeing the scope of projects get huge, even on Kickstarter. A lot of it has to do with marketing, I think. You know, like, Kickstarter can be great to market and get your game idea out there and kind of... I mean, in this way, you know, it helps them judge, like, all right, is there, you know, an actual demand for this game, even though we've already put in so much money? Um, because it it is tough to just throw out an idea that you haven't really worked on much yet, you know? Like, um, a lot of times Kickstarter projects do have a little bit of dev time in them. Uh, you know, like um, the Darkest Dungeon you mentioned before, right? Um, they, you know, because they need to, it helps present a good, uh, basically, prototype or get a good sense of what the game's going to be. Um, but yeah, it is kind of tough when you know, people who really, really need the money and the views, you know, are getting pushed out by much larger, much more, like, uh, financially stable uh, projects. Yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree on that, especially because there's been so many projects that mention, you know, huge examples where I then have to go and see, like, okay, what, who's making this game or who's making this CD or who's making this project, they already have a fan base or they already have a community of several million of, of people. They could have raised the money they need uh, through pre-sales or through advertisement or whatever. Um, well, you know, real small projects that can't make it happen without get pushed aside and end up somewhere in the 50th page or whatever. And, and that's what I think is sad about something like this. Mm -hmm. Very well, that's interesting. great. Anybody else want to sum anything else up about Kingdom Come before we switch over to our speed round?